Hello my darling viewers and welcome to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Miranda and I am the Enchantress of Avalon. And for today's video, I have decided to do another archetype video, which is part of my fairy life, my fairy lifestyle series of videos and blog posts over on my blog whitehorseofavalon.life. And the archetype we will be discussing today is the fairy herbalist archetype. Now, this is an archetype, like any of the other archetypes I've discussed, that I am feeling into currently in my life and that I think is very empowering. And a little bit of how you could feel into this archetype yourself. So what is the fairy herbalist archetype? Pretty much what it sounds like. It is a fairy magic archetype that is centered in... <laughs> in herbology and in herb craft and in herbalism. So we can think of it as this magical fairy witch or fairy who is really powerfully activated in the green witchcraft realms, the green magical realms, and in the realms of herbal knowledge and herb lore. So it's feeling deeper into the connection of herbs and plant life. And it is, for me, very much so Morgan Le Fay in her realm of, in her role as healer in the Ninefold Sisterhood of Avalon, when she is Morgan the Healer, where we first meet her in Jeffrey of Monmouth's Vita Merlini. Yes, I'm back to talking about Vita Merlini and Morgan's brief but ever so important appearance in this text. It's the first literary appearance we have of her. And we see her as a magical fairy woman, a healer, a goddess, and the leader of a ninefold sisterhood of other magical women ruling the Isle of Avalon together. That is the energy of the fairy herbalist. It is this green path living on the sacred isle of avalon energy it is very much avalonian in my opinion and i also associate this with the queen of pentacles in the tarot and i have always been very connected to six different tarot cards above all others and those are of course uh the empress the High Priestess, and the Four Queens of the Tarot. But I've noticed that certain ones of the those six will appear in my life more so when they're kind of nudging me in a certain direction. I need more development in this direction. Like I might have the Queen of, <clears throat> the Queen of Cups appearing a lot when I should be deepening into my water magic practice, which I do a lot of water. Basically, my practice as as fairy as it is, has a lot of water in it and a lot of green magic in it. And it's the blending of the two. That really brings me to who I am. But with the Queen of Pentacles appearing so often, and she has been appearing for me for the past few months all the time. I just, I see her all the time. And I think that this is due to my needing to deepen into the green side of things. And I am taking an herbalism course and I am so thrilled to be taking this nine month long herbalism course taught by the amazing Suzanne O'Gara. And it's really rooted in Avalonian herbalism, which I love. I adore that. I feel like that's part of why I knew this was the right class for me. I've been wanting to deep dive deeper into herbs for a long time and focus on <laughs> herbalism because I would like to, of course, work deeper with this and even become certified. But it had to be the right type of class. It couldn't just be a random herbalism class taught by someone who wasn't going to really come at it from my perspective. I didn't want it to just be the 
medicinal and real scientific perspective. I want that. We need that, of course. But I also wanted the other esoteric perspective on things. And this is the perfect course for that. I'm so, so thrilled. And it's in starting that course that this archetype clicked into place for me. It's okay. I'm feeling more into Morgan as a healer. I'm feeling more into my inner queen of pentacles. I'm feeling more into that rooted groundedness. I'm feeling more into the fact that I am a Virgo sun and moon. So for a long time, I had a hard time thinking of myself as a Virgo. It didn't feel like I was a Virgo. I'm really loud. I'm really out there. I'm very, very exuberant and very much so liking to be the center of attention. But when I looked into my chart and realized I was a Leo rising, that's why <laughs> all of that stuff is the Leo rising, but my sun and moon are both in Virgo. So this is, that's the earth element. That's the natural earth mother energy that always also felt very intrinsic to me. And that's what is activating in really deepening into this archetype as well. So when you want to get in touch with your inner fairy herbalist, what do you do? Well, first of all, if you are getting into herbs, really getting to know the herbs that you're working with is of prime importance. And that doesn't just mean reading up on their medicinal and magical properties. Of course, do that. That's the first thing before you actually get the herb itself is you want to get to know what the herb is about on an intellectual level. And then when you actually have the herb near you and you're working with the herb, you're holding it, you're communing with it, take some time, smell it, touch it, taste it if it is ingestible and get to know this herb, meditate with the herb. You can meditate with it via one of the cards in the herbal astrology deck. I love meditating on herbs with that deck. I'm so glad I got it. Uh, but you could also just meditate holding the herb. You can meditate after having drunk the tea made from this herb. And it's a great way to really get invested in this herb. Get to know it. Build a relationship with it. And... You could also build a relationship by seeking out ways to find it in nature. Where is it growing in your area, if it is? Um, and of course, as I said, Herbal Astrology Oracle is a great way to deepen into it because you could see these beautiful illustrations. And of course, read more about it. Just never think that you have too much knowledge on that particular herb. What are other ways to connect with this archetype that aren't just getting to know individual herbs? Okay, well, walking barefoot in the grass. This is something I have always loved to do. I am someone who would prefer to be barefoot pretty much all the time. I do not like having to wear footwear. So if it's warm enough and I'm out in a grassy area, I'm going to kick off my shoes and walk around in the grass. I've always been that type. I do not want to have to wear footwear of any sort if I don't have to. And in warm weather, I'm probably going to be wearing sandals over anything else because again, they kick off really easily. <laughs> uh, picking flowers and herbs, of course, is another great way to get in touch with this. Just going out on a windy day and let the wind ripple around you and through your hair is a great way of just feeling into this very natural energy around you and laying down on the earth, lay down on the earth and stargaze at night, lay down on the earth and watch the clouds and try and pick out different shapes in the clouds. Another one, camping. Camping is amazing way to just happen to any fairy energy, but especially if we're talking about the herbalist energy, that very, very green energy. And in fact, I first realized that fairy magic was my central focus 
when I was camping at a music festival with my husband, we, we weren't married then, but when we were boyfriend and girlfriend still, and we were at a music festival and I could just feel the fae all around me and I could feel the energy of all of the plant life as well as the beauty of the music. And I just felt like I was fae in that time. I knew why. I knew that this was my path and this was what I was always meant to do. And out went the eclectic and in came centralizing on that fairy stuff. Uh, and also dancing in the mo moonlight while well, barefoot is the last thing that I have on my notes of ways to connect with this very important, very primal, very fairy centric archetype. It is truly a beautiful archetype to get in touch with. And I am so blessed that this archetype has really activated within me. And I feel like it is connected quite deeply to archetypes I already embody, whether we're looking at kind of the classic Jungian archetypes, which I like them when filtered through the lens of the work of Jean Shinoda Bolin, who wrote the God, the gods of every man and every man and goddesses and every woman books. And that is, let's look at them through the concept of the Greek gods and goddesses. And so for me, my primary archetype is an Aphrodite archetype. So that's very much sensuous and alchemical in nature. This is creatrix energy, manifesting things and inspiring others. It's very, very sensual and sensuous and sexual, yes, but it's that deeply rooted in the present and rooted in what is natural to you. Do you love being surrounded by beauty and lovely smells and, you know, joyful things? That's very rooted in that Aphrodite thing. My secondary archetype is Persephone. Specifically, I tend to acknowledge and feel into that more underworld aspect, the death aspect, but this time of year, especially as we're in that spring is in full bloom, we get that spring goddess energy within the, the Persephone archetype. And that is when you combine the two of those, the sensuousness and alchemical nature of Aphrodite and the springtime flower goddess of Persephone, entwining them together, that's the fairy herbalist archetype. There's a little bit of the mystical femme fatale in that. What is the other side of the fairy herbalist is that little bit darker side that herbs can both heal and poison. So that kind of has the threads to the mystical femme fatale. So, which is the first archetype I, that was kind of my own title that I talked about. I, I gave the name to it. So this all entwines and I understand why deepening into this has felt so natural. And I do hope that some of you viewers out there feel that you might want to get to know this archetype, get into the herb lore, get into the green world and get to know what your inner fairy herbalist wants you to know. And I want to note that the herb I've been working, working most with lately, as it was the first big herb, like the major focus of my fairy herbal, of my rather, of my herbalism class <laughs> was nettle. Nettle is amazing. And I've been drinking nettle tea every single morning and it's been helping so much with my allergies as well as just helping with energy and overall well-being. So I highly suggest checking out nettle, nettle tea. It is amazing. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like, comment, subscribe, and check out my blog, whiteroadsofavalon.life. Have a very fabulous Monday, everyone. Bye now.